I see whole fields of dead coral. The white skeletons sticking up. Bleaching caused by an ocean that's become too warm. Brown algae is already spreading over it. The first step in the disintegration of the reef. This section here was a completely covered in algae and it's not expected to disintegrate. And then down here, complete rubble. Nothing but fragments. We know of no global bleaching events until the 1980s. And now there have been four. The ocean is continuing to warm. That means bleaching events like this will happen more often. Swimming over this reef has been so badly damaged by two consecutive bleaching events. Just make you feel a little helpless. Precisely, it makes you feel angry. Because when you just was coming, we go into years. So that was a fascinating dive. The disturbingly half-dead, half-alive reef, the, the, it was grotesque in some senses because the colours were wrong. The colours are all wrong, different to how a reef should look. Felt most like I was watching an animal die. That was the most confronting part. That and the scale. The damage to this reef is shocking. But to truly understand the scale of the problem, I need to get up high. I've come to Townsville to meet Professor Terry Hughes from the Australian Research Council's Centre for Coral Reef Studies. Terry conducts aerial surveys of the Great Barrier Reef. His team of scientists assess what's happening over its immense length. It takes us uh, about seven or eight days of flying to crisscross the whole Barrier Reef. Last year in the northern 700 kilometre stretch of the Barrier Reef, roughly from Port Douglas all the way up to New Guinea, we saw an average loss of corals of 67%. That was catastrophic and tragically we've now had bleaching again this year. So that's two-thirds of the corals are dying. And it's not a question if the corals are dying. The corals did die. The bleaching is incredibly conspicuous. Stark white coral heads punctuate the dull brown of a damaged reef. We're not going to be able to maintain the reefs in the condition that they're currently in or that they were in 30 years ago. That's simply not possible. Reefs like the Great Barrier Reef will be so degraded they'll be unrecognisable. If this is happening to the entire reef, I can't help but wonder what it will mean for the ocean and for us. I was 20 when I first dived on the reef, and I loved it. I was blown away. I thought, here is a place that is so alien, so complex, and so very beautiful. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest reef system in the world. Its waters pulse with life. From the fish that find food in the currents, or graze on plants and coral, to the hunters that pursue them. And 
there is abundance, like few places on Earth. Around a third of all Australian fish spend at least some time on the Great Barrier Reef. But the reef also directly affects us. It protects our coastline from the power of storm-driven waves. And it's a tourist mecca worth nearly $30 billion. The vast majority of scientists agree that burning fossil fuels is warming the planet, especially our oceans. And the effect on coral reefs is dramatic. Fundamentally, to keep this reef in a pristine state is impossible right now. We've had two years of consecutive bleaching. All the predictions are that bleaching may become uh, a fact of life if we don't cut back carbon emissions. <sighs> Given how slow the world is moving on carbon emissions, this means that we are going to lose these reefs as they are now and that the question then becomes, do we just let that happen? Do we just see what survives? Or do we use science to try and create corals that can survive some of these heat stress periods?